Hello everyone, I am back with another episode of Open Book with Betty's Booklist, and today I will be talking about Meant to Be by Emily Giffen. And this book I think actually came out last year and just released in paperback, which I love because I want a paperback. I want to throw that book in my bag and not have it weigh 20 million pounds. And so it was sent to me and it is basically JFK Jr. fanfic. And well, it sounds bad to call it fanfic. It's like really highbrow fanfic. Like Think like Wattpad fanfic, like a retelling of his life, but like a little bit different. So it's not exactly a ripoff, but written as though it was like high end women's fiction that's like super gripping. So, like, really, really fantastic what in the Wattpad kind of stuff here. And I loved it. But before we get any farther, please go ahead, subscribe to this podcast, rate it five stars, write a review. It really means so much to me and helps me so 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 much so please go ahead and do that and we are going to dive into the book so i'll start by reading you the back cover copy so you know what it's about here we have the kingsley family which is basically the kennedy family keep in mind the kingsley family is american royalty beloved for their military heroics political service and unmatched elegance in 1967 after joseph s kingsley jr is killed in a tragic accident His charismatic son inherits the weight of that legacy, but reckless, free-spirited Joe III has trouble meeting the expectations of a nation, or those of his exacting mother, Dottie. Meanwhile, Kate Cooper also grew up fatherless, and after her mother marries an abusive man, she is forced to fend for herself. Discovered at age 16 by a model scout, Kate decides that her good looks might be her ticket to a new life, and before long, her face is appearing in magazines and on billboards. Yet she has always felt like a fraud, faking it in a world in which she's never truly belonged. When Joe and Kate unexpectedly cross paths, their connection is instant and intense. But can their relationship survive the glare of the spotlight and the so-called Kingsley curse? So this book is based on JFK Jr. and Carolyn Bessett Kennedy's life, but it's not like directly based on them. It feels It feels like a distinct fictionalization, and I'm sure so many things are total fabrications, but knowing that it was about them kind of gave you, like, a sense of where the book was going. And I think whenever there's two characters and two POVs like this, we have um, Kate's POV and Joseph's. We kind of know they're going to end up together because otherwise, why else would we be hearing from the two of them? And little history lesson here. I don't know if you all remember, but JFK Jr. was in a plane crash with his wife, Carolyn's her name, right? Let me just double check this. Yeah, Carolyn Bessett and her sister, they all um, were killed in a tragic plane crash and he was flying the the plane. So I think knowing how that happened in real life really, it kind of puts the pressure on like we know this is going somewhere significant even though we don't know if that will actually happen in this book because like I said it's a loose fictionalization there's a lot of stuff that's different it's just the framework of the story that is very similar like I think if they hadn't um had it be the Joseph Kingsley Jr. or Joseph Kingsley the third rather which kind of sounds similar to JFK and Kate and Carolyn sound similar like if those things weren't true I think this could have for the most part with a few changes passed off as like a different type of book but because their names have the same first letters which I'm sure is on purpose it really does feel like a fictionalization of this famous family and honestly though when I was reading it that wasn't something I was thinking about like it felt familiar yes as I was reading because it is familiar we've we all know like what the Kennedy family I mean they're iconic we know everything that's ever happened to them but it felt like a distinct story in itself so we basically follow the two characters through their life until they meet and Kate is from an abusive household her stepfather is abusive she wants to get out so she starts modeling even though it's not her passion and um Joseph is basically 
Um, he's not a fuck boy, but he is like, I think like gossip girl vibes. He's like elite, you know, he's like, he's like a Kennedy. He is wealthy and exclusive and goes through women and is funny and just smart enough not that it really matters because everyone wants him to be a politician they think he will one day be president basically his mom wants him to eventually run for office but isn't trying to trying to push him with too heavy a hand and so she wants him to start looking for someone who's eligible as his wife because you have to be married to be president like you need a family you need the optics and he starts dating this woman margaret in college they're both at harvard together and she's very demure and sweet and smart and like very eligible and so they're kind of on off but serious and Kate like dates people but nothing is serious and nothing is significant because she's focused on herself and her career and building herself a good life and thinks guys are not worth the trouble basically after growing up with her stepdad and Joe also has this friend um what's her name I read this book a few days ago. Oh, Barry. Her name is Barry. And she's his female friend from childhood. And if this were another type of book, it would be Friends to Lovers. Because, like, you get the vibe that she's in love with him. Like, they're introduced in both Bond over having lost parents. Because he's lost his dad. And she's an orphan, actually, when she comes to his school. And she's really close to his mom. And you just kind of can tell, like, she's never happy with the people he dates. Like... The signs are there, but he really doesn't see her that way. And when it's written like that, it's just kind of sad. But we're not rooting for her because we're obviously rooting for Kate. And we kind of watch him grow up and grow into himself and not want to settle down and wonder if he should. And his story doesn't really pick up until he sees Kate. And when he sees Kate, it's like certainty in an instant it's like nothing he's ever felt before and it shows him in an instant that what he had with margaret is nothing and he decides not to propose to her and like it changes the course of his life after they meet in passing on the beach while she's modeling and kate meanwhile models and her story is a lot more i would say she's the more developed character because we know less about Carolyn Bessett too so like we're really able to get into who Kate is and Kate models and she ends up leaving modeling ultimately for working for this stylist who it kind of seemed to me like it was like Burberry-esque or uh, I don't really know I don't know all the designers but she ends up leaving modeling to be like the celebrity stylist for this high-end designer so she is selling clothes to celebrities and that works because she's like glamorous and known but not like super super famous so she can still be catering to them and she flies all over and is selling them clothes and then once they meet she like gives him her number or rather her makeup artist friend does he gives the number to joe and he never really calls because he's with Margaret at the time and he doesn't want to be dishonest because Barry's like on him about not being a dick as she should be I mean especially back then like no one wants him to be a fuck boy that's the end all be all but ultimately he goes in and she outfits him for a bunch of clothes he buys them and he's like then begging her to go out with him and it is really sweet I loved how much he pursued her and she was obviously reluctant because she thinks that she's basically um not good enough for him that she'll be ripped apart in the tabloids everything like that because she didn't go to college she didn't graduate high school and like these are things that she thinks rightly so his family is going to care about because they're not just looking for a wife for him they're looking for a future first lady of the united states she's worried they'll think the modeling is trashy meanwhile she is the nicest person she is the epitome of class she is incredible but she is right to be worried and she's also seeing someone at the time though she breaks up with him and she tells joe you know if you want to see me i'll be in paris and he flies to paris gets a room at the same hotel as her takes her out to dinner and they end up starting to see each other because of that 
trip and he buys her an Hermes scarf which I mean talk about a great first gift but they start seeing each other in secret and he wants to make it public she thinks he'll just be okay like who doesn't want to just what guy doesn't want to just be fucking in secret he gets like he doesn't have to wine and dine her and he still gets his dick wet like isn't that what all guys want no not Joe he wants everything with her because he loved her and that's the difference between her and the other people he's dated like He just knows. When you know, you know. And even though she really likes him, she sees it as kind of like a lost cause. But eventually they do get found out because they go like to a restaurant together because he begged her to even though she always says no. And so they get found out and then decide to make it public to the world. And this whole part is like the best part of the book because everyone wants to imagine they're in those like princess shoes. It's like Princess Diana. It's like it's just dreamy you know this was my favorite part of the book it just felt so exciting but they decide to like debut their romance with an exclusive in people so he works with this paparazzi he's known since he was a kid and they sell a photo of them to people for two hundred thousand dollars and split it with the paparazzi donate the money to charity and then that's like their debut and it says like you know inside sources confirm blah 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 which There is no specific inside source, but I guess that's what people do, which was interesting for me to hear because that made me think that when Taylor Swift's breakup was reported, we could have trusted it because the inside source is just what they say when they're trying to like announce something, but don't want to make it an announcement themselves. And so the photo of her from this little outing is incredible. She looks like a million bucks he's being so like gallant and chivalrous because he's madly madly in love with her and they become like an overnight sensation soon like if she steps out with a certain bag that bag is instantly sold out she becomes like a huge sensation and I have chills thinking about it because this part of the book was just so good oh my god like I want to read it again like I need to forget what happened so I can enjoy it again I was flying through this book I honestly couldn't put it down I was supposed to be making dinner and I just like had to keep reading it was that good but watching her celebrity rise in this way when she really doesn't want to be famous it was really exciting because it's like the classiest kind of famous because she's famous just for being so incredible she's so beloved that no one cares that she doesn't have the pedigree they would expect for his girlfriend and because he's never actually been serious about anyone before it feels really special that he's so serious about her and I love that and they end up having problems obviously and I don't really like to dive too hard into the low point because it makes me sad But it was well written, it was well done, it was believable, and I actually did wonder when I was reading it, which I rarely wonder during a low point because I know how books work. I write romance books too, like we know how it goes. I wondered if they were not going to get together, which is crazy because this is based on history. We know what happens. But I did wonder if they were going to break up, maybe come together later in life, but we're kind of like too far through the book for that. Like... The whole breakup seemed really serious and what was so lovely in this book was I could feel how much he loved her. I could feel how in love they were. It made me emotional. It made me sentimental for my own relationship and those early days because they're so they're so amazing and this was just incredible. Like I truly felt them falling in love in a more artful way than most other romance books that I read and they obviously have their problems they break up and they're technically broken up when they big spoilers coming here guys so if you want to catch up come back but when they get in the plane to go to his cousin's wedding they are they're on the rocks like he's begging her to get back with him she thinks like it's not gonna work because of like her pedigree and everything and like she found out her real dad killed two people in a drunk driving accident so she thinks that will be such a mar on like 
her in the news when it ultimately comes out that he won't want to be with her. It could ruin his chances for president. She has to let him go, which I find annoying when it's a guy being like, I have to let them go. In this instance, it made sense. He's like the future president of the U.S. Like, it made sense for her to be worried about that. But where this really deviated from reality is they don't die in the plane crash. He gets knocked out after doing a water landing, and even though she's not a strong swimmer, she drags him over to, like, a piece of the plane while he's unconscious, and they hang there, and they get rescued, and I'm actually, like, tearing up thinking about it because it was so well done and so emotional, but... It was just, like, so lovely because even though she's trying to cut him loose, she knows, like, she has to save him or die trying because she just loves him so much, like, and unlike in Titanic, they can both fit on the fucking piece of plane, and then in the hospital, his mom reveals that she had a PI look into her. She already knew about her dad before Kate even did, like, it doesn't matter to them, and then, like, jump to the epilogue. They have two kids. He's deciding to run for president happily ever after, and... This book was just so good, you know, the from familiarity, blah, blah, blah. the familiarity of it just made me like it more, and it was so well done, like, Emily Giffen never misses, like, all of her books are really amazing, but this is easily my favorite of hers. I'm looking in the back cover to see if it shows her other ones. Yeah, I'm looking. I've read three of her other books, and this is absolutely my favorite. It is so incredible, and it's an ambitious story that she handled with such grace and class and, like, highly, highly recommend. So, Meant to Be by Emily Giffen. Go read it, subscribe to this podcast, rate it five stars, and I'll see you next week.